All right, we're back. So we've talked about our heat transfer, right? That's all Q equals MCAT. Now we are gonna talk about our phase changes, okay? So phase changes, right? We have one uh, pure substance generally, um, and it takes a certain amount of energy to break those IMFs to change the phase, okay? So energy is gonna increase as we melt or boil, right? And it's gonna decrease as we freeze or condense, okay? Um, but the temperature is constant. Okay, so we made something last year where we heated something over time, I believe, and we said, oh, we went up in temperature and then we hit a flat line. That flat line was going solid to liquid. And then we increased our temperature again and then we had a flat line that was going liquid to gas and then we could increase the temperature again, okay? So solid to liquid, and then liquid to gas up here, right? Our temperature, this is our temperature, does not change. That's why we had our flat lines, okay? So with these sorts of problems, right, we have Q equals um, essentially our mass times uh, the, the uh, molar heat transfer, right? or the, the molar heat of fusion, okay, or heat of uh, vaporization. So uh, with water, the heat of vaporization is 40.7 kilojoules per mole, okay? So if we have our, uh, uh, let's say we had 100 grams of uh, water that we were going to boil. Well, that 100 grams, we of course would need to change to number of moles. So 18 grams of H2O to one mole. And then we can use our heat of vaporization there and say 40.7 kilojoules per one mole of H2O, and that's gonna give us our energy that it takes to do this. So uh, let me grab my calculator. 100 divided by 18 times 40.7 is gonna say, tell me that I need 226.1 kilojoules to uh, boil my all of my 100 grams of water, okay? So that is uh, the calculations that we need to do with uh, a phase change. Whenever we have a phase change though, remember that it is reversible. So if it takes 226.1 kilojoules to boil all that water, right? We have to put all of that energy into the system. It is reversible and it's gonna give out 226 kilojoules to get back to being a liquid, okay? So going forward here is reversible and we can go backwards, okay? This is known as molecular reversibility uh, and it will be important as you move on in your chemistry career, okay? But let's go ahead and let's talk now about our chemical changes, okay? So chemical changes, of course, right? This is all about making or breaking chemical bonds. Um, it, of course, changes our potential energy, right? Because those chemical bonds are, are potential energy, okay? So our enthalpy, right? Our enthalpy is H, okay? H is the enthalpy, okay? The change in, an, in enthalpy is directly proportional to the amount of reactant or product, okay? So to illustrate this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a chemical reaction here. So H2 plus Cl2 goes to 2HCl, right? To be able to go through this reaction, it's gonna release 
185 kilojoules, okay? So oftentimes, you, we'll see this reaction, and then we'll see delta H equals negative 185 kilojoules. It's saying that as this reaction occurs, it releases 185 kilojoules. So what we can do is we can say there's 185 kilojoules that are produced in this reaction, okay? That's gonna be over on the right-hand side there, okay? So our enthalpy change is that energy change for a mole of this reaction, okay? So a mole of this reaction, it's not to produce a mole of HCl, it's a mole of the whole reaction, okay? So if I have one gram of Cl2, how much energy can I get out? Well, I can just do a stoichiometry chain again, okay? So one gram of Cl2, I can put my molar mass on here. So Cl2 is 35, so, uh, or 35.45. So that's going to be 71 grams of Cl2 to one mole of Cl2. And in my reaction, I have one mole of Cl2 that produces 185 kilojoules. For every mole of Cl2, right, in this reaction, I get 185 kilojoules. So if I do that calculation, then it's going to release 2.61 kilojoules, okay? Yes, it is negative now because I have it on the right-hand side, okay? Right, it is producing 185 kilojoules. So negative 185 kilojoules, right, we're going to get negative 2.61 kilojoules out the end here, okay? Again, the enthalpy, if we were to take these, uh, this reaction and I were to flip this reaction, now my 185 kilojoules would be on the left, and so it would take 185 kilojoules to get this reaction to occur. So for me to take HCl and get back to H2 and Cl2, I would need 185 kilojoules. So if I flip the reaction, I flip the sign of my enthalpy, okay? But if I just uh, cut the reaction in half, right, then I cut my overall uh, enthalpy in half, okay? So if we have uh, multiple reactions, we can actually add those reactions up, okay, and get to an overall reaction. So if we add reactions, we add enthalpies, okay? So this is what's known as Hess's law, um, where we need to add a few reactions together to get to our overall uh, chemical reaction, okay? But let's talk about that bond enthalpy, okay? If we have um, a chemical, right, like Cl2, and we wanted to break it up into two Cl atoms, whoops, that looks weird, but two Cl atoms, right, there was a chemical bond there and we had to break that uh, chemical bond, okay? It takes energy to break the bond, right? It's going to take energy to break the bonds. If you guys maybe hear this differently or hear it weirdly somewhere else, Always, 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 it takes energy to break the bonds, okay? But if we have uh, a reaction again, let's take another reaction, we can actually calculate how much uh, energy it takes for that reaction to occur. So if I have N2 plus 3Cl2, that's going to go to 2NCl3, right? We can actually, we know the bond enthalpies for each of these compounds because it's been uh, measured by chemists, okay? So this comes from our, uh, a table in our book, okay? This is information 
that you can look up. Okay, this would be information that they would give us on the AP test. But we know that an NCL bond, a single NCL bond, is uh, 200 kilojoules. But over here, we've made one, two, three NCL bonds times two. So we've got this times six. We've got 1,200 kilojoules in the bonds over here. Over on the left hand side, we've got an N triple bond to an N. This is 941 kilojoules. And then finally, we have three chlorine chlorine bonds. A single chlorine chlorine bond is 239 kilojoules. But we have three of them, so we're going to multiply it by three. That's 717 kilojoules. Okay, so what we can do now is we can do bonds broken minus the bonds formed to get our overall energy change. Okay, so we would do 941 uh, plus 717 minus our bonds formed, which is 1,200, and that equals 458 kilojoules. So it took 458 kilojoules to get this uh, reaction to occur, okay? We got one more thing here that we'll come back for in a second.